பர்சனல் சர்வைவல் டெக்னிக் பார்ட் டூ மெரினல் வேஜஸ்ட் சேஃபர் ஷிப்ஸ் கிளீனர் ஓஷன்ஸ் ஹை மெரினஸ் திஸ் இஸ் மோகன் தாஸ் எ மெரைன் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி மெரினல் வேஜஸ்ட் யூடியூப் I am going to play the slides for Personal Survival Technique Part 2. When I started this YouTube Marinas Digest in 2019, my first video was Personal Survival Technique. And that has been watched. I am happy to announce more than 33,800 seafarers. and average every day there are 20 seafarers watching that youtube even now i thank every one of you now this part two is as per imo guidelines once you get inside the survival craft your life raft life boat what are the sequence of action so that is the guidelines from imo so i made it to slides i'm going to play that now before that i'll give you a recap of uh, part 1 so whenever there is a, a real abandoned ship situation general emergency alarm signal 7 short blast followed by a prolonged blast is given in the ship whistle ship horn okay so what is your action wherever you are you are supposed to take your warm clothes raincoat life jacket if you are provided with uh, immersion suit you take immersion suit also any medications if you are consuming on daily basis take that also finally a tip from my side not in the solas from my side you always maintain a grab bag g r a b bag grab bag that i mentioned in the slides also you can watch okay is nothing but a travel bag or a school bag usually all your certificates stcw model or certificate passport cdc all these documents and certificates you will be depositing to master upon arrival onto the ship right whatever balance certificates valuable documents you have keep it in the grab bag whatever balance of salary you have always keep it in the grab bag and all the valuable items like uh, small small electronic items or gold jewelry etc that you can keep it in the grab bag so all these items if we keep it in the grab bag once in real abandoned ship situation after uh, taking all these necessary items like life jacket immersion suit warm clothes uh, raincoat medications and all you just pick up your grab bag then go to master station okay that will be quite useful to you otherwise uh, looking for all this your certificates money electronic items jewelry etc it will take some time so that should not happen that is why i advise you always keep a grab bag with you okay now you proceeded to the master station if you are going to abandon the ship the announcement will come in public address a verbal order from the master or his deputy okay but every seafarer should know before you leave the ship who will come for your rescue you must inform them many time rescue coordination centers are there world over you must inform them whatever may be your position of vessel 
you must inform the MRCC. How do you inform? In part 1 I mentioned the most reliable satellite equipment is Inmarsat C. There is a distress button which you will have to press it for 5 seconds. Then you can send a distress message also in that. Okay, all the deck officers, third officer, second officer, chief officer, master, and in passenger vessels, even the IT officers, they are all holding the GMDS certificate. They know how to format a distress message. Okay. So the point is you must inform MRCC by pressing the distress button. Either in Inmos at C or now recently IMO has uh, authorized another satellite system called Iridium. Their equipment if also they have this 5 second distress button. The advantage over Inmos at C in Iridium equipment is when you press the distress button immediately you get a voice call back in the, in the Iridium equipment from the MRCC. The MRCC operator will talk to you. Then you can explain uh, and clarify many items, how many people are there, if anybody is injured and what is the real situation, all that you can, if time permits, you can explain. So that is the greatest advantage of Iridium satellite. Okay. Anyway, so you, the point is you must inform MRCC either th through Inmos at C or Iridium satellites. Okay. Then you are safe. But you are a seafarer working in engine room, galley department or some other department. Why you should know this? You are not going to press this button. Why they have included this in personal survival technique uh, syllabus, uh, proficiency in s survival craft and rescue boat syllabus. Why they have included? The reason is Master also is a human being, so sometimes he, he, may, he may forget to press the distress button. So if you, every seafarer, once you are standing in the master station, you should remind the in charge with the walkie-talkie who is standing in front of you. Normally they are navigating officers, deck officers. Okay, so they will confirm from the master whether he has pressed this distress button. That is the reason every seafarer should know this. That is why they have included in personal survival technique and PSCRB courses. Okay. Right. You informed them. So I had given uh, a tip from my side, which is not included in Solas. Have a grab bag. Okay. Then another important thing is never ever jump into the water. So if you jump into the water, your body temperature will go out of your body 25 times faster than when you are in the air, okay, away from water, okay. So never jump in water. You wait for your in charge instruction, then you follow that, okay. If you are in water, your body temperature goes out means that will lead to hypothermia, shock and death. So never jump in water. Alright. Now we will go to the slides. Thank you and support me. Immediate action in a life raft. The instructions concerning immediate action upon entering the life raft should be written in easily legible type on waterproof material and displayed so as to be easily seen by a person entering the life raft. The instruction should be written in one of the official languages of the IMO
in addition to the official language of the flag state. Action number one, cut, painter and get clear of ship. So always you will find a knife near the opening inside a pocket. Once everybody is inside, you cut the painter and go clear of ship, safely away from the ship. Action number two, look for any, uh, I beg your pardon, look for and pick up other survivors. In case somebody is there in the water, you will have to look for them, then pick up them using this rescue quiet. Rescue quiet. The ring is called that uh, rescue quiet. It is attached with 30 meter long rope. The speciality is the rope and the ring both will not sink in the water. Three, ensure sea anchor streamed when clear of ship. Sea anchor streamed when clear of ship. That is to prevent uh, drift. Action number four. Close up entrances uh, if appropriate. If you want to close up, you can close up the entrances. Depending upon the weather condition and sea conditions. Action number five. Read survival instructions. There is a survival book inside. Read them. How to survive in a life raft? One, identify the person in charge of life raft. You should know who is in charge. Okay. So here I had given the applets of third officer, second officer, chief officer and master. One of them may be there. For that matter, anybody who is holding PSC or B certificate may take charge of the life raft, life boat. Okay. So you first identify who is the person in charge of a the draft where you are in. Number two, post a lookout. So lookout, you will have to pay a post so that if you see any aircraft, any ship going by, then you will have to draw their attention. So you will have to post a lookout. Number three, open equipment pack. So we have the SOLAS pack A and SOLAS pack B. SOLAS pack A is for the international voyage ships and SOLAS pack B is for the coastal ships. So inside there will be more than, in SOLAS pack A, more than 30 items are there. These items you can find on board the ship in your mess room in the ship specific uh, SOLAS training manual. So all the list, entire list of LSC items will be there. You learn them, know them, know their advantage. So here open equipment pack. Number four, issue anti sea sickness medicine and sea sickness bag. So this is very important. Everybody should take an anti sea sickness uh, medicine. The reason being, if you avoid this, uh, you may vomit. 
so there is a sea sickness bag also issued to everyone vomiting is okay but then to compensate the body fluid loss first 24 hours they will not give you water that condition also will lead to hypothermia and shock death so that is the reason you must take anti sea sickness medicine this one tablet will save you number 5 dry life raft floor and inflate if appropriate that depends so on board you will find inside the life raft there are two sponges given one you can use it for wiping the floor if it is wet and another one you can use it for collecting the rain water which is deposited in the canopy okay so here you dry the life raft floor and inflate if appropriate this is the pump which you can press it by leg or by hand okay number 6 administer first aid if appropriate sometimes uh, because of uh, the emergency involved in abandoned ship people must have got injured so there will be a lookout outside and there is a lookout inside also he will look for any injuries because the person who is injured he may not know he may be under stress so they may be bleeding so the person in charge who is uh, on lookout duty inside the raft he would look for any injured person then carry out the first aid first aid kit is there many were towards other life rafts secure life raft together and distribute survivors and equipment among survival craft so here this is called marshalling so you have uh, too many numbers of uh, survival crafts life boat and life raft as a thumb rule all type of ship you will have on the starboard side 100% capacity and the port side 100% capacity so usually other than passenger vessel everyone about 20 people 23 people they will get inside the life boat and they can launch them and survive but uh, as per uh, solas regulation you will have to launch the rescue boat with the rescue boat crew then you will have to lower all the empty uh, life raft life boat whatever is the remaining on board in the water then you to one by one all the occupied unoccupied uh, life rafts life boats and tie them together and stay together which is called marshalling the advantage of marshalling is uh, you are projecting a bigger target another one is you can distribute the survivor so you unoccupied uh, life boat life raft you can send the people you can comfortably stay there with uh, their water ration etc whatever equipment they need you can distribute among the survival craft so you are all tied together staying together but you can stay comfortably okay number 8 arrange watches and duties so turn by turn this lookout outside lookout inside lookout you will let arrange the in charge will arrange it number 9 check life raft for correct operation and any damage and repair as appropriate so there is a repairing kit these all items will be there you can repair if there is a puncture and all it's all tube only so you can do the repairing then ventilate if co2 leaking into life raft so the cylinders which is uh, inflating the life raft is co2 sometimes is likely to leak inside the life raft so in that case co2 for uh, your uh, information it is not toxic but however it will remove the oxygen so 
it is not good for the people to stay there so you will have to ventilate it right co2 is not toxic but asphyxia will affect so lack of oxygen will create there so ventilate if co2 leaking into life raft number 10 check functioning of canopy light and if possible conserve power during daylight so during daylight this canopy light is not required to switch it off so that if at all you need it in the night time night time very much you need it but uh, by then if the rescue people not come if you are staying in the night time also then you can make use of this number 11 adjust canopy openings to give protection from weather or to ventilate the life raft as appropriate number 12 prepare and use detection equipment including radio equipments so here i have explained in pst part 1 the radar reflector advantage so once you place this radar reflector on top of your life raft or life boat your life boat life raft survival craft will be indicated in the approaching aircraft or ship as 300 meter long ship a very large target in their radar screen so that is one advantage and the radios we all know that epurb and sart now with this uh, gmds modernization which is coming up in 1st january 2024 imo has authorized and recommended made it uh, compulsory also along with epurb there is one epurb ais along with radar sart you have ais sart also so these all knowledge you must have so epurb originally was operating on 406 megahertz and 121 decimal 5 megahertz for homing purpose okay and it was using low earth orbit polar satellites okay even now epurb is also will do the same thing epurb is also it will let have gnss system also gps also attached so from 1st january 2024 if you are going to play the epurb that should be the newer version epurb attached with ais transmitter and also gps gnss system so that means the older version epurb it was going to cosmos or sat satellite from there it was coming down to local user terminal a land station who used to calculate the position of epurb then pass it on uh, the id and the position to mcc mission control center mcc will inform mrcc so that is the cycle of operation the same thing will happen now also with epur bis the advantage is because it is attached with ais nearby ships nearby coast stations whoever has got this ais equipment will receive this epur signal also with the position so that is the greatest advantage and this is become mandatory after 1st january 2024 if you are going to play the new epur it should be epurb gnss ais attached okay that is about epurb now the sat what you have it's operating on 9 gigahertz okay you can call it red or sat and that used to go to only the x band radar the frequency is 9 gigahertz the wavelength 3 cm x band okay now they have 
approved AIS SART. So the SART will have AIS uh, transmitter attached. So the radar SART uh, definition of you see search and rescue radar transponder because it used to respond to the radar signal. The AIS SART will not have 9 gigahertz it will not respond to the radar signal here the full form is search and rescue transmitter okay AIS SART means search and rescue transmitter it will operate on AIS frequencies VHF frequencies it will go to AIS equipment on board the ship the AIS uh, equipment is overlaid with both the radar X band radar S band radar also egg disk okay so wherever in your ship the AIS is connected overlaid in all those equipments you will get this AIS sort so you readily get the position bearing in range immediately but then unlike hyperb radar sort and AIS sort it is not mandatory you can have either of them you can have either radar sort or AIS sort that is the regulation okay but uh, AIS sort has got lot of advantages over this radar sort number 13 gather up any useful floating objects so you may find many items the vessel has sank you may find many items floating around okay the debris so you can collect any useful items like uh, walkie talkies uh, the life boys the mattress pillows etc whatever uh, useful floating objects you can ca gather up Fourteen protect against heat, cold, and wet conditions. So that you will have to make sure. Number fifteen decide on food and water rations. So, how many people are there? How much water? How much uh, ration you have? Then accordingly you decide on food and water. Sixteen. Take measures to maintain morale. Many people will be totally upset. Okay, you left the ship. Many things you left. Now you are worried whether you will reach your home safely or not. Uh, so definitely, excellent communication system and uh, excellent uh, search and rescue teams are available. Nothing to worry okay so the in charge the person who is doing inside lookout duty will have to tap every individual when they are upset when they are under stress some people may be crying okay so you will have to console them stating that nothing to worry the rescue is on the way and they will safely reach your home so you will have to maintain high morale. Seventeen, make uh, sanitary arrangements to keep life raft habitable. So I put up some picture here. So when you are marshaled all these uh, more than two, three, four uh, survival crafts together, you are all tied up together. So one life raft, you can keep it for uh, toiletry use so you can cover that area you can use your rope whatever you have uh, okay then you can send anybody wanted to go inside for toilet they can go they are not going to use the life raft as a toilet but from the crowd three or say 20 people 15 people 10 people are there inside a life raft in front of them you wanted to use your toilet needs you may 
find it uh, difficult so you can have a separate life raft allotted for the sanitary purposes where other people are not watching accordingly you can make arrangements other people cannot see so like that you must make some arrangement number 18 maintain life raft including topping up of buoyancy tubes and canopy supports so if you wanted there are two tubes will be there if you wanted to inflate you can inflate and use them okay number 19 make proper use of available survival equipment so now you since you taken out all the items from the solar pack a you know what are all the items are inside what is the what are their uses everyone should know okay then you make use of them twenty prepare actions for number 1 arrival of rescue units so since you have informed uh, uh, mrcc before leaving the ship after you come to the survival craft you are uh, rescue your uh, life raft you would come to life raft you will definitely you must have switched on your eperb sort so you eperb is the secondary means of distress alerting device it will be keep on updating your position okay so they will de- certainly come faster than you think okay so you prepare the action for arrival of the rescue boat units maybe coast guard mrcc is coast guard only okay uh, maybe coast guard ship will come or helicopter will come for rescuing or towing being taken in tow sometimes you will be taken if the land is nearby they will take you by tow also rescue by helicopter so helicopter rescue also possible sometime landing and beaching so you me come across the land then you will have to land and beach it and pull the raft on the land side and wait for rescue team notes number 1 the order in which the above instructions are followed will depend on the particular circumstances number 2 the above instructions can stand alone or can be amplified as appropriate to the satisfaction of the administration so this is the guidelines for uh, the fact state from the imo list of contents for the live boat survival instructions or manual the same points identical points what we saw in life raft same thing is here number 1 the person in charge of the life boat shall immediately after clearing the ship organize the following look for and pick up other survivors from the water marshal life rafts secure survival craft together distribute survivors and equipment among survival crafts streams ye anchor if appropriate rig exposure cover or foldable canopy post a lookout number 3 issue anti sea sickness medicine and sea sickness bag number 4 administer first aid if appropriate number 5 
arrange watches and duties number 6 prepare and use detection equipment including radio equipment number 7 gather up any useful floating objects number 8 protect against heat cold and wet conditions number 9 decide on food and water rations number 10 take measures to maintain morale number 11 make sanitary arrangements to keep lifeboat habitable number 12 prepare for onset of adverse weather number 13 make proper use of survival equipment number 14 prepare action for number 1 arrival of rescue units number 2 being taken in tow 3 rescue by helicopter 4 landing and beaching same points like life raft note the above list of contents should be used to compile a lifeboat survival manual to the satisfaction of the administration so here i had given about the grab bag see farers must have a master copy of all documents and certificates at your house okay because you are carrying the original documents always so if you lose it you can take the duplicate if you have a original proper copies easily okay remember you are always carrying original documents such as passport cdc stcw course certificates etc while traveling never keep your documents in unaccompanied baggage they should be always carried as hand baggage while on board ship most documents are deposited with the master you must always have a grab bag to keep all other documents certificates your salary and all other small electronic items or other valuable items in case of real abandoned ship you can always pick the grab bag along with your warm clothes life jacket emergency suit any medications etc so that is all from this uh, pst part 2 this is a book which i published for bsc nautical science students also nautical officers it is there in amazon kindle store for 100 rupees it's a ready reckoner okay all the distress message format agency message format and all you can find in this for those who are appearing for gmds course all practical examination equipment or explain with my voice over in 19 videos in mariner's digest so i have explained about inmars at sea mfhf radio vhf radio navtex battery charger even eper bun sort and all that so you can make use of them uh, all the practical examination point of view i made 19 videos that is all thank you support me for my efforts time spent and maintaining the infrastructure you may donate using the qr code also you can buy super thanks please click like bell button and subscribe please give your comments in youtube thank you bye until next video